Hi, I'm Trisha, an organic gardener here at the San Francisco Garden Show. And I'm here with the author, Jessie Bloom. She wrote Free Range Chicken Gardens. And this is a book that you can get at Peaceful Valley. And I would like to um, ask Jessie a couple of questions. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. So you're, an, you're a garden designer, yes. a landscape designer, yes. but your focus is on edible gardens and chicken coops. Tell well, me how and what this is all about. Well, I started out in horticulture many years ago, and basically I, I believe in gardening as ecologically as possible, and to me that means mimicking nature. Um, but we also have to consider our own needs and, and what food we're going to be eating and, and utilizing our gardens for food. So basically the chicken concept came from, um, I've had chickens for a long time, probably since I was in school, and I had to learn how to raise them but I refused to put them in a cage and lock them up. So it took me a while, a lot of trial and error, and I have figured out a system that works really well for me so that I can benefit from chickens and all of their natural behaviors and get the eggs, get the fertilizers, get all the benefits that they really offer. So in a condensed version for this interview, what do you do with the chickens? Well, there's a lot of options, which is why the book's thick. <laughs> um, and it depends on how you raise your chickens, what you raise them for, what kind of gardener you are. But there's a lot of ways to keep chickens and your garden working symbiotically. And it depends. So if you have a, you know, a garden like this actually is a really great example. Chickens yeah, can't get can't into climb. this. Yeah, so it's great. They can fly though. They, some of them can, but not all of them. And there's um, information in there about what breeds are heavier. Um, how you can clip their wings, which isn't always the most popular choice, but it is an option. Um, there's fencing options. There's plants that chickens actually don't necessarily like to eat. Mm -hmm. So um, knowing that and designing your garden well and matching it to what your needs are for your, gar your chickens is actually a really good thing. I know you're a, a very natural, almost permaculture type gardener. Are there any uh, tips in this book about how to do things permaculturally, and if you could describe what that really means, that would be great. Well, permaculture is a, is a big topic. So to summarize it, I would say that it's a design system. It's a framework for people to basically live their life in an ecologically, in an ecological way that has, um, it mimics nature as much as possible so that we're utilizing energy efficiently um, and we have a closed loop system. So basically with chickens, and one of the things that I really promote in the book is to let them live as naturally as possible. Because by, then, by that, they're eating the food directly from the soil. You don't have to buy in pelletized bags of food. Um, you don't have to buy chicken manure either, do you? No. <laughs> no, but you might have to set up a composting system. Um, it, it really depends on how you're raising chickens, but I want to benefit from them rather than fight nature. And they benefit from that as well because it's a really natural lifestyle for them. Mm -hmm. And it's fun. If you do it right, um, you won't hopefully be mad at your chickens all the time. Um, and you have a, a framework set up so that they ha you can utilize them and have them in different areas at different times. It, one of the things I talk about a lot in the book is confined range systems. So they're not necessarily just free ranging for anybody, you know, to, or anywhere in anyone's garden they're actually confined to certain areas but then they're rotated through zones so that they can you know forage in one area before it gets totally decimated they move to another zone and they go through several of them before they get back to the original one and depending on the time of the year the food crops that you want to grow they actually help clean or glean the the excess fruit and any pests left i was thinking that they probably take care of some of the bugs that are yeah. bothering our garden yeah and they help weed they're actually really efficient weeders which can get them in trouble but um, they have a lot of really great attributes and if if we aren't prepared for that then we can get in trouble or the chickens rather get in trouble and then we get frustrated so it's it's all about being prepared ahead of time. So one last question. Um, we're looking down at this beautiful chicken coop on display here. Mm -hmm. Do you have shelter for your chickens? Do you still give them a place to go at night and so oh, yeah. forth? Yeah, um, I would say anybody who has chickens should have a night shelter and a very secure one at that. And there's a lot of different tips in here about how to design that. Um, it, and one of the main things is having really uh, predator barrier proof or predator proof barriers that the, the like raccoons can't rip apart, so there's a lot of specifics in there. Great. 
It's been so interesting meeting you and talking to you. I love your book. I recommend that everybody read this book and grow organic for life. Thank you, Jesse. Yes, thank you. <laughs>